Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm with Eric, the reptile guy who loves reptiles, and he's going to tell us all about what he does. Hi, Eric. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, so Eric. thank thank you for having me on your fireside chat today. <laughs> It's great having you here. So you have so many projects going on all the time, but I think your overarching umbrella is to help save animals, right? Absolutely. Yes. That's the overarching umbrella of what, what's going on right now with animals in my house and all the projects that are going on now. It's, it's all about, you know, self, not just saving animals, but like, first of all, following your dreams because we're animals ourselves, you know? And I think that, you know, a lot of humans have have born like attached themselves to what the society says you should be as a human being and what you should be doing and then you lose sight of what's really important as far as the connection with the life that we have right now like the moment like me with this animal right now this animal is like connected to life us communicating together is connecting us to to our life force and so you know it's easy to get wrapped up and forget about your life force, especially like just now, I, I mentioned to you, I'm doing a project now and I started unpacking up toys for PBS, which I'm excited about. And I remember, I just, I'm reminding myself to keep myself in balance and saying that, you know, my value or if they like this or not has nothing to do with, um, it, has, it has nothing to do with my value as a person or, or what, what life is going to bring me or what's going on in my life. It's, it's, it's like, your life force is like you every day breathing this moment, all that stuff. And so, you know, and I'm learning that from being with the animals, to be honest, and being vegan. <laughs> well, and you have a book, is that right? I have a couple of books, actually. Okay. I have a couple of books. I was like, looking. at, so I self-published my books and, I, and I, 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 I get the ISBNs. I have a small publishing company called Wild, Wild Books Alive. And you know, and each time I publish another one, I'm like, Eric, you just published the book. It's like, you really did it. And you took the time and, you know, we went through all the, the things and, and yeah. And, and now we have a magazine that's launching this weekend. Like that okay. it's huge. It's like a huge, and we don't even have the physical copy yet because we literally just got, um, we just got the, the, um, the ISBN numbers yesterday. We just got the copyright yesterday. And, um, you know, so everything's, you know, it's moving. <laughs> So is this mostly geared towards children or towards everybody? The nice thing about this magazine, it's really everybody. It's for everyone because nature's for everyone and we're learning about one species per month. However, earlier today, I, I actually interviewed a scientist. Her name is uh, Sasha Greenspan. She studies frogs and she studies um, infectious diseases in frogs. And um, she, we were having this discussion this morning about the magazine and she's actually in the magazine and it was sharing how how frogs and and um and uh can how the diseases in frogs can connect with the diseases in humans namely chytrid fungus and COVID 19. so we actually made a connection with those two um invasive pathogenic diseases so it's it's and that's in the magazine and then you also have like crisscross puzzles for kids you know what i mean and like you know fun things and and so and it's all so it's really it's it's it spans all age all age levels you know everybody can learn something from our new magazine nature now 360. <laughs> great and and you have toys that you're sending off do you, can you show me the toy yes i can show you the toys i have them right here so here's one of them this is a glow in the dark glow in the dark 3d printed frog and um it's 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 biodegradable so it, you, you can see we're using this um it's called jute twine it's just basically like made of burlap and then we we're packing these into burlap sacks with our with our information on it that they can scan these frogs and get videos every thursday to learn about how to be more environmentally friendly and which you know how to connect to animals in nature and why it's so important you know um so yeah that's what's going on <laughs> so let's see books magazine 3d printed animals and yeah. then so are you still doing live shows? Are you doing those during COVID? I am still doing live shows. And the truth of the matter is, and I'm glad we are able to have this conversation, is that, you know, I've, I love doing the shows with animals. And I've done this since I was very young. I was 19 when I got my first job at a reptile museum doing this. And the thing of it is, is that I recognize more now than ever, which is, it's not even scary anymore, but at first it was, was that 
eventually, like I, I love doing this with our animals and sharing. However, there, this job of, of sharing animals, it needs to change because of the job that we have when we, when I'm doing this presentation in front of children, all children see is like this dude with the animals. I want to get an animal. I want to be like him. Kids say that all the time. And so the issue with that is that so many of these animals are going extinct in the wild. Many are going extinct. Many in, in, in the pet trade are, you know, unfortunately exploited to, to make money. And, and it's, it's not, and I don't think it's intentional. I, I, I want to kind of rephrase that because exploitation sounds like it's people are doing something intentionally. It's not intentional. It's that the way it's always been, like nobody really was connecting with a snake and thinking like, oh, the snake has a heart and feelings and you know it has feelings but you don't think of it in terms of humans you know some you know when you anthropomorphize something and anthropomorphizing means like you give it human emotions and and sometimes people give it human emotions but then you also give it like a toy like a doll like you know i don't know what that would be called <laughs> if it's like if you if you if you think of something as a doll or a toy you're not really anthropomorphizing you're just thinking of it as a toy it's like just a toy it's a, it's a commodity i guess right right it would be like that so, but it's not intentional. So like I said, again, because animals don't have a voice, it's not intentional that people do this. And so for my job is to really share that aspect, but also to say, all right, well, I need to follow my own words and actions by saying, okay, well, if I keep taking in more animals over and over again, this is never gonna stop. You know, I'll be 99 with a house full of animals under a pile of newspapers when I pass away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so I guess the take home is really, it's so like the message from the magazine is speaking to being outdoors, go outside, go see it outside, connect to it, understand why it's there and now make the necessary adjustments. So Sasha Greenspan, we, we had a wonderful conversation. She's a great scientist. She's studying the, the chytrid fungus. She found out that, that the um, bullfrogs can have a like an undetectable amount of, of fungus and and wipe out a population of other frogs wow. that are sensitive. Yeah, and then she we were talking about that and it was like wow that's deep and she, and we were sitting, we were joking around saying that you know I wish that people understood that some of the activities that we do actually affect those animals but those animals prevent us from getting certain diseases like for example like for um for West Nile virus and things like that things that are mosquito borne diseases. When those animals, when frogs and amphibians are in abundance, those animals kind of take care of all that kind of the disease carrying animals that would have left the pond. Some often get eaten before they could really cause a problem because there's this huge, wonderful balance, you know, and when the balance is way off, then you can get, you know, a, a, a overabundance of ticks or an over, overabundance of mosquitoes and overabundance of viruses that, or animals that get sick, like it's, for example, uh, a deer that has a disease would likely die in the forest. However, if it's living in a place that's fragmented forest, like, like in cities that have been overpopulated and overbuilt, then that animal can likely, you know, come into the population of humans and, and cause a problem. You know? Like Lyme disease. Like Lyme disease. Yeah. 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 You know what eats li the, the, the deer ticks? No, what? Ticks? Uh, 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 plo uh, not plovers, um, bobwhite quail. Bobwhite quail and, and uh, op opossums eat oh. ticks. That's their primary food. They eat them. They love them. However, when you have no forest and there's no possums and there's no, there's no bobwhite quail, then you have a bunch of ticks all over the place and, and causing problems in people. So it's like, it's really important to understand our role. And that's why I'm excited about the magazine because I'm doing this now and I understand fully that now it's time for the next chapter. So when you're in your, when you're in your love, everybody knows you as that. So sometimes it's not easy to move into the next chapter, you know, because you're like, well, everybody knows me as Eric Reptile guy. So I have to come out with my animals every time because they're not going to understand if I don't. And I don't mind coming out with them still because I love them. These are my babies. But at the same time, you know, just being very careful about, you know, if I'm doing it in front of children, you know, if I'm pushing the mag, if I'm pushing this more than I'm pushing something that is a, a really important mission that will actually help save our planet, that is right. critical, you know, like it's critical. And I, I feel like, Eric, you've been silent too long. You've been too quiet. And 
and just kind of like not being like a puppet, but like you're doing this, doing the same stuff over and over again. But like as I'm doing it, I'm realizing like now, Eric, like put your like you have to pause on the shows. If somebody wants to book you for 10 shows this week and you know you have your magazine to put out, you gotta say no, sorry, can't do it this week, you know, and that's what I've been doing. And it's financially, it's like, whoa, you just you just said no to all that dope. Yeah. Like <laughs> So your main you know, is really to change people's minds and educate people and try to get them to take better care of the planet, yep. the animals on the planet, including the human animals, because if we ruin our planet, then we're not going to survive. Any oh, of it. it's clear. This virus is clear. I'm not happy that it happened at all. I'm just, I, I think it's a, a, a really great opportunity to learn. And all the people that passed away, I said it, I've said it in most of my interviews this week that look, we owe it to those people to do the right thing now because those people passed away for us to wake up, you know, because if they hadn't, people would be like, oh, well, everything's fine. But it takes that number of people to pass away for people to wake up. And some people maybe still won't, you know? Right. And that's the sad part. But like, I think that it, it, it's really important to realize that nature, it's like nature illiteracy that, that many of us have, you know? And it's not like, again, and I said, I'm not doing it as like a, a dig on anyone. It's just like, just how it is. It's like, it's right. just, it's facts. It's like, it's not, it's not anything like, you know, to, to put anyone down. It's just to wake us up and say, all right, look, if, if we don't understand about something, then we got to take time to, to, to recognize, you know, right across from my home, there's a, a river and, you know, they, they were last, last, I think I mentioned this in one of our interviews too. They were, um, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were dredging. And the week before, I, I just moved here. So it was my, my first springtime here. And I was out there looking for frogs and turtles. Like, I hear them out there. I'm going to go look. I went out there, found these little toads called Fowler's toads. And then next thing you know, I'm like, wow, there's tadpoles. Oh, there's a turtle. Oh, there's all these wonderful wildlife. And then the week later, they're out there dredging the whole thing, right? Where exactly in the spot where I found the, the tadpoles. Mm -hmm. And so I went over there and I, I shared with them. I'm like, look, you know, I see you dredging. It's already too late now, pretty much. Is there any way I can slow it down? It's like, nah, the work is already done started. It's started already. So we can't, you know, there's nothing we could do. And so I was just like, wow. Like, and I said, do you, are you aware that there are some amphibians here that are, that are actually uh, on a species of concern list in New York state and endangered in Vermont and endangered in Canada? And they said, no, nah, we didn't know that. And so by the time, you know, the work has already been approved, it's already too late. They've already approved it. So it's like, you know, standing in front of it, like with a pitchfork is not going to do anything, you know? I mean, I know people do that and I don't, I'm not knocking it, but I'm just like, it's like a point, like, but it's really, what's that really going to do? The really important thing is to let people, have people understand it from long before and, and like really start getting in their yards, looking at things with their children, being careful with supplies, with, 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 um, with products they use in their home, pesticides, plastics, microplastics, all those things can affect our food source. It can affect our life, you know, and it is right now it's happening. So, you know, so that's what this is all about. This is what it comes down to. Like, let's respect the creatures and let's, let's do it together. And, you know, it's my hope that, you know, that the PBS programmers that get these and everybody that will receive, you know, a glow in the dark frog, that this will be our campaign for the, the next month and a half to all, all the way through the holiday, get a glow in a dark frog as a symbol of your, your, your commitment to, to living the best life you can in harmony with the creatures that we live with. You know, that's what we got to do. Absolutely. And when you talk about the forest and the creatures and everything, that's where new medicines come from. I was just talking to somebody the other day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there have been things for a long time about don't cut down the rainforest because we've gotten so many medicines from nature. Oh, goodness. Everything. All of our medicines come from there. You know that. I don't yeah. know if you're aware, like aspirin, it comes from the forest. The um, rubber comes from the forest. You yeah. know, um, there, there are frogs that actually, um, the toxins from the frogs have been known to, to shrink brain cell tumors, ganglioma, that can yeah. cure that. There's so many, so many wonderful gifts in, on our planet. And, you know, and we can live off that, you know, it, there's no reason to capitalize on it. I mean, it's good to make money, but you don't have to capitalize on it in a way that is destructive. 
you can you can you can benefit we can all benefit and rise together in the best way possible and that's the thing it's like you know it, it's like capitalism people look at capitalism as something wrong i'm like no there's nothing wrong with with with, with currency it's just that you got to recognize that is it is it that to the to the the demise of a population of creatures that are going to help support our planet that you just can't see it right now what it's doing you know right. and it's it's to open your eyes it's to like like realize that when we work together with the planet that we're all unstoppable there's no there's no levels you know that we're all riding that wave together and that's so powerful and it's like you know when i look at what's going on in the world and the racism and all that kind of stuff i'm like oh man you're missing out like you're missing out like we're missing out on like the gift of ourselves like we are all so powerful every single being every person it's just that when you don't realize it when you feel competitive and all that 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 messes it up and when you work together and say wait i'm gonna offer this gift and not worry about what anybody's doing then you rise so strong you know beyonce i was i love listening to beyonce and over the not my i want to say my mentors my mentors in a way yeah I, I, I understand exactly what they mean when they say it. I was listening to something from Beyonce and she say, she said, um, I'm not competitive at all. I just, I, I, I look within myself and want to do better and stronger every single time. Now imagine if everybody did that, we'd all be trillionaires. <laughs> and you know, what's interesting doing these fireside interviews, Eric, is that I get people who are in the same industry, uh -huh. they all do it differently. Yeah. So I'll get a bunch of business coaches. They don't need to compete with each other because they all have a different twist on what they're doing. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. And there's I, enough for everyone. Yeah. I do want to say one thing. So you draw people into love of the planet through love of animals. Mm -hmm. And most people don't really think of snakes as animals. They think of them as reptiles. But yeah. what impressed me the first time I met you, how much you really, really love these snakes. Your story about finding a snake that was almost dead and bringing it back to life and force feeding it and everything. Yes, 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 yes. And it, it's, I, I love that, you know, that was Twinkie. Do you want to see Twinkie? Yeah. Yeah, do you have Twinkie? She's downstairs. Do you want to go get her? Yeah, go get her. go get her. Hold on, hold on. Just because you just said that story. I'm like, yes, that's true. That was her, that was Twinkie's story. Hold on, hold okay. on. Okay, we're back to recording. Here's Twinkie. You brought the, the iHeart Studios in New York with you. Yes. This First is time you're on Passage to Profit. Yes, 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 yes. So this is Twinkie. And he, um, you know, he's a rescue. So, you know, back to what we were saying before about respect for the animals. You know, I'm, I'm so appreciative that I rescued Twinkie, that I've got him. But the thing of it is, is that he, you know, he was an animal that that um you know i've had for years and and he was an animal that was abused you know like he was he was on death's door when i got him and they had to force feed him for a year before he actually ate and so you know and he's also a designer animal in the sense that people breed them just for the colors that they have and stuff like that and it's just like you know it sounds like a nice idea but like at the end of the day you know it's it's more like oh look at what it looks like not where does it come from you know, last night, I told you I didn't get much sleep because we're working on getting the magazine out by this, but you know, the published date, which is already registered for the 24th. And so that we're doing, I'm up all night doing that, but then I hear the animals moving around in the night. So they're, they're knocking stuff over. <laughs> What's going on? Then they hear banging. And, but a lot of my animals are loose in the house. I let them, let them free because I realized that their life is not in a fish tank. The second you open it up, they're going to get, they want to, Gonna, gonna wanna be free. So, you know, our mission now is to let people know, like, look, if you can avoid getting exotic pets and learn what it feels like for, for the freedom of that pet and then for the freedom for yourself, you know? So it's like, you know, I'll, I'll continue to do some rescue, but I'm more like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of moving away from that as well. So I don't have to feed it. So it's almost like what you wanna see grow, you gotta feed it. So I'll, go, I'll be feeding, you know, our, our magazines and our nature center in Madagascar and all the work we're doing with the children and the PBS kids shows and that stuff, because you can teach for the, let the rain, for, let the forest be your, your, your classroom, you know, so this yeah. will still be going on, but less, you know? Yeah. So what's the name of the magazine? It's nature now 360. You saw the first one, the original nature now, the nature now first one. I did. Nature Now 360, um, 
I could, you know, if you let me share your screen, I can show you a, a, a sneak peek if you'd like. Absolutely. Yeah, I could do that. All right, so I'll, I'll share the screen and let's see, hold on a second. Let me just bring it up. And where do people find it? Oh, it's uh, nature now. It's going to be on naturenow.love. And like I said, the published date is the 24th. So if they look, look for it any time after the 24th, certainly they can find it. And um, just give me a moment, Elizabeth, if you just, if you October 24th, Eric. Yeah, that's this Saturday. Yeah, two yeah days. three days from now. So by the time I get this up, it'll be out. Yeah, it'll be out. It'll, it'll certainly be out. It'll be out. And um, we're actually putting the, the, um, the, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the press release is going out first thing in the morning and, you know, people will know about it, you know, that's it. So, so um, is, are you still doing any shows at all? Oh yeah. No, I still, I still do shows. I still do shows. Certainly. Um, I just, um, it's just, we just decided to, to just curb it just a little bit for now. Be, and, and make sure that the message is very clear, you know, a, as we do them and then, and then have more resources because, you know, if you, if you to ask someone to do something, but then you don't have a resource to like give them, you know, a way to go about it, then it, it's not really helpful. That's like somebody giving advice about, you know, you really need to do that, but you know, but like but they didn't give you any, any resources, you know? Right. So that's why, you know, it's important to understand, like, you know, how to, you know, like, so in other words, the magazine is the resource. Right. You know, the magazine exactly. is the resource. And I'm going to show you now. So this actually, that's the poster. Hold on one second. And then well, these are the posters. These are the final. They, I just, I'm just getting all the stuff over posters for final review, all this stuff. And I'm like, Eric, this is, this is crazy that you've done this, like that, that we've done this as a team. And, you know, um, and it came all as a result of a Kickstarter campaign that we did in July in the middle of all the COVID and everything. I was telling people like, look, you can do a Kickstarter campaign and make, raise yourself $10,000 for your company. And you just have to believe in it and, and go for it. You know, anybody could do it, you know? So you ready? Yeah. Okay, here it comes. And this is Nature Now 360. So oh, wow. this is the, this is the, um, so this is a double sided, a two part magazine. So when you flip it on one side, you have this side, this is the bullfrogs. All okay. right. And then when you flip it upside down, it's going to be the butterflies, which I can show you in a moment, but look, this is, this is the whole thing. This is uh, this is actually the, they're editing it. This is the edited being edited version. And you can see it has all these things and QR codes throughout that you can scan it and then you get to look at the animals in virtual reality. And that is something that, um, hold on, do we have my glasses here? Well, you know what virtual reality glasses look like. So we, we have virtual reality, virtual reality glasses that are on their way now that are also part of the magazine. So when you see, find a scan code like this, you find that code there and then you scan it. And when you scan it, that brings you to your virtual video and and then it also has tutorials, questions, and answer for the children. So children that are homeschooled right now and they're bored. Yeah. It's gonna give you a whole lot of activities. And every single Thursday, there'll be a new video uploaded onto one of these right here. So if you have your glow in the dark frog, you get them every Thursday, but you have to get the frog to get the every Thursday videos. And that has a course on it that has every every Thursday I'm live you know, and you just scan it and it's like, oh, what are we going to learn this week? And a lot of the stuff you're learning are things that are practical to learn in your own life that'll support you, but also you get the adventure aspect with the animals, you know? It looks like so much fun. You have little contests and... Yes. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent, Eric. Excellent. Yep. Well, I'm going to look for the magazine. I'm going to have to subscribe. Yeah. So yeah, check this out. This you see this guy here. That's my mentor, Pete Warney, the reptile man. Knowing him since I was ten years old, he was mentoring me about animals. He came up here to visit me, and that's one of our adventures. He was showing me these crayfish and frogs and stuff. And so he was there. Um, this is us out with kids. Um, our first pilot to our PBS um, uh, kid show, and it was called. Well, the the pilot was called a Wildlife Kids Connection, which we may keep that name. We'll see. But um, this is out with the kids and they were all looking for frogs with us together. 
and it was amazing. And we, we did that three years ago now. I can't believe the time has gone by. And, you know, these things take time. So it's like, you know, someone's like out there that's, that's like ready right now to do their, 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 um, you know, their, their business. They got to understand, like, sometimes it, it may take a few years, but just keep at it. You know, sometimes it takes that process to get the things going, you know? Absolutely. This mm -hmm. is wonderful. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's just in Save Wildlife Now. This one, this one actually speaks a, a little bit to, uh, to chytrid fungus and how to keep things clean. There's crisscross puzzles. There's, there's all about the bullfrog here. There's the art and story contest. <laughs> there's like just so much fun, so many fun things to do here. That and, looks awesome. So what about the PBS show? Are you doing a show on PBS now? Well, we have one out now. It's called Reptile Rumba. Yes, it's 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 going to be airing up and up through through the holiday until April, and then um, then I think in that that'll be uh, that'll be it'll be closing after that because um, our our license is for four years, so it's been four years already. Wow, it goes by fast, but yeah, we've we've been airing in thirty nine states and um, you know hundreds of times, and uh, it's been it's been it's been wonderful, and you know reaching you know you know, I guess hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, maybe even millions of people, because it also airs on, on PBS World, on the World Channel. So I think they have something like, they have millions of viewers, so we don't know like the exact numbers, but like, you know, uh, when we first got, got, uh, got uh, we're out, put out there, we ended up being, uh, um, uh, we got 75% of the TV market on our first tryout. You wow. Know? And didn't even know how to do what to do with it. We didn't know like you need to have your merchandise ready. You gotta have everything ready. You didn't have anything ready. We didn't know. That was the first time. So I was like, well, we got round two now, so it's good. Excellent. Well, this magazine. I remember when I was a little kid, there were magazines of this type, mm -hmm. and I loved them. You know what? Yeah. Um, and I think adults and children alike. But it's it's a great magazine to sit down with your kids with and go through and yeah. try to put words and look yeah. at. The videos and Fun. Know, packed full mm -hmm. so excellent excellent yeah. Yeah. is there anything else we need to talk about on your video before we well get i think that's it i think everybody just you know go to naturenow.love get the magazine and, and and come have an experience with us you know come do come come along come along on the ride sounds like fun thank <laughs> god <laughs> yep gotta come along for the ride <laughs> okay thanks eric Thank you, Elizabeth. It's wonderful. Yeah.